I'm joined now by Chief Executive Officer of the Command and General Staff College Foundation, Colonel Doug Tystad, U.S. Army retired. Doug, how are you this morning? I'm great. And yourself? Very well, and I appreciate you coming in, and I appreciate you asking me to call you Doug. I had to let everybody know. I called him Colonel until he told me to call him <laughs> Doug. He's a Colonel retired, and he's now helping run this Command and General Staff College Foundation, which is right here in the KC Metro, just a little bit to the west, and uh, Fort Leavenworth. Correct. So let's start with this. What is the mission for the Command and General Staff College Foundation? Well, we support the command and the U.S. Army's Command and General Staff College, uh, and we say that we do, we support the development of military leaders of character and competence for service to our nation. Uh, the Command and General Staff College was established in 1881 by uh, General Sherman uh, to educate uh, mid-grade officers for uh, future future significant service to the uh, to the country. Uh, we've been doing that mission since 1881. We added international officers in 1895. And today, it, uh, the Command and General Staff College encompasses three different schools. Uh, the Command and General Staff College, or General Staff Officers Course, the School for Advanced Military Studies, and the School for Command Preparation. Uh, in a year, they run... Uh, plus, they have a uh, uh, they do in residence as well as distributed learning. So in a year, they'll run anywhere from uh, eight to ten thousand students. Um, the Command and General Staff Officer course, which is kind of the flagship, is also a master's degree granting institution um, accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. So there's a lot going on up there, and the, the uh, foundation's mission is to support all of those educational missions, uh, as well as support the families of our uh, soldiers, uh, our, our military, and to, uh, to help connect Americans to the, to the college and to the, uh, to the military. Yeah, and I think it's kind of a secret around here. I mean, everybody knows Fort Leavenworth has the prison. <laughs> right. Right. But not everybody knows that Fort Leavenworth has the Command and General Staff College. Right. And there's been some really big names that have come through there. You know, Dwight Eisenhower, uh, General uh, of the Army and President of the United States, was the honor graduate in 1926. George Patton, that everybody knows, uh, Patton, he was uh, uh, the top graduate in 1924. Uh, wow. George C. Marshall, the uh, Chief of Staff of the Army during World War II. The and Marshall then Plan. the Marshall Plan, right. later the Secretary of State. He was a graduate in 1908. Uh, and then more contemporarily, we, we had uh, Colin Powell graduated, uh, David Petraeus, uh, uh, Marty Dempsey, uh, pretty much a who's who of the military. So it, this is when you're trying to give them advanced studies in military strategy, right? And that is correct. Uh, what what they try to do, uh, because we educate mid-grade officers, which means they've got between 10 and 13 years of service, these folks, when they get there, have been working kind of at the small unit level, you know, company command, maybe a couple hundred people. And what we try to do is take them from uh, what we call uh, unit leadership or direct leadership and move them into organizational leadership where they're now having to communicate with larger organizations. They're having to plan on larger, longer planning horizons, uh, and they are moving to, towards organizational leaders. Uh, this, will, this will be the last education for some of our officers, uh, the formal education, uh, and so it has to serve them for 10 to 15 years of military service. We're talking to the chief executive officer of the Command and General Staff College, Colonel Doug Tosh said U.S. Army retired. And this is right here in Fort Leavenworth, and they've been doing big things for a very long time, going back to the 1800s. Has it, so it hasn't always been in Fort Leavenworth then? Oh, yeah. Or has it? Uh, really, no, from it 1881 all the way back to From 1881 Fort through today. They, they took a, um, a two- or a three-year break and moved everything to France during World War I, uh, but then they came back to Fort Leavenworth. But, no, it's – that has been uh, the center of ar of officer leader uh, officer education since uh, 1881. Wow! And you mentioned it became international. Now, does that mean we're bringing in uh, our allies, or is it also? I mean, do we bring 
bring in people from China and Russia, or is it, hey, we want to <laughs> help our people and eh, not so sure about some of the other well, people? Well, actually, it, it's a part of our national uh, uh, foreign policy. Uh, the military program started in 1895. This year, we have 110 officers from 85 uh, different countries. Uh, and so each year, we get somewhere between 100 and 120 officers from anywhere from 75 to 90 different countries. We're looking at in uh, the class of 2017, we run from August to June. So the class of two se- 2018 will start in, uh, in August of this year. We're looking at 120 officers from 90 different countries. Wow. It, it is part of our foreign policy. So uh, the, the, the officers are chosen uh, by the ambassadors, uh, the countries are chosen by our ambassadors through the different combatant commands, which are the, the military structure throughout the world. Uh, they come. They can be friends. They can be partial friends. Uh, currently, we have nobody from Russia or uh, China uh, or Iran, North Korea. Uh, for a long period, we had nobody from Vietnam, but in 2014, we started getting Vietnamese officers again um, we, in this class this year, we have our first Panamanian since, uh, 1998, uh, if you, or, I'm sorry, 1989, yeah, 1988. So if you remember Panamanian our world history of the Panamanian invasion in, in 1989, we hadn't had a Panamanian since then. Right. So it's, it's, uh, it's a program to bring these officers in. We... Yes, we teach them the same thing. They go to class with the with the uh, military students, uh, but they also get uh, additional classes uh, and and experience with America, and they live here in America. They experience Americans up close and personal. Uh, some really interesting and long lasting ties are built. Uh, General Powell, when he was uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, tells the story that. When there was an issue in a in a uh, international issue that was coming up, he was able to pick up the phone, call his classmate from Leavenworth, and find out what was going on. And he was assured that everything would be fine. So it's those kinds of of uh, you know uh, relationships that are formed not only among the military, but we also have sponsors, uh, local sponsors from the Kansas City chapter of People to People from Leavenworth Lansing and from the military that form really long-lasting relationships with these folks. That's really interesting. And, and it also gives the people from these other countries the opportunity to see an yep. America that is not New York or L.A. Absolutely. You know, it's not just what you see in Hollywood. There's this great space in the middle that you know may be slightly different. Well, and, and, and it really is, uh, and that's the beauty of it, is they see the Midwest. Uh, you know, I mean, what, what I consider to be true American values. Sure. We're talking with Chief Executive Officer Colonel Doug Tystad, U.S. Army retired of the Command and General Staff College Foundation, and that's located right here in Fort Leavenworth. And with all these foreigners, I understand a lot of them leave you gifts to the college. And Absolutely. so you guys have a little museum. There's some stuff that the general public can come see, right? Absolutely. Uh, the, the, fort, the fort, access to the fort is controlled. Uh, but uh, and you have to have identification to get in. You have to stop through the visitor control center. They do a background check on you. Uh, if you uh, are from Missouri, you have to have two forms of identification because of the driver's license issue. Um, but uh, but the the post is open to the public, and and there are two museums there actually. There's the official museum, which is the Frontier Army Museum, and then there's the Lewis and Clark Center, which is where the Command and General Staff College is. And that's where we display all of these uh, different pieces of art. Uh, inside the Lewis and Clark Center, we have two halls of fame. Uh, the first is the Fort Leavenworth Hall of Fame, which honors those uh, members of the military that have had a distinguished impact on our country uh, and have served at Fort Leavenworth. So they have to have served at Fort Leavenworth. So we've got... Uh, General Eisenhower is in the Hall of Fame. We have General Krulak from the Marine Corps is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, But Ulysses S. Grant, President of the United States and a famous general, is not in the Hall of Fame because he never served at Leavenworth. Uh, General Sherman is in the Hall of Fame. 
Uh, and then we have our International Hall of Fame up on the third floor, uh, which honors those international officers. You know, we've graduated almost, uh, this year we will go over 8,000. Uh, wow. and, um, and of those, 27 of them have made it to the leadership of their country. Uh, today, the King of Bahrain, the, the Prime Minister of uh, Singapore, and the President of Rwanda are all graduates of CGSC. So you don't see that real often out in the world. But we have a Hall of Fame for those individuals. And then we also have a number of display cases around the building uh, that that display the gifts that have been given by our uh, internationals, by our distinguished visitors. Uh, we also have art that has been uh, donated to the college by the different classes. Uh, that includes not only uh, uh, one-of-a-kind oil paintings, but, uh, but also uh, we have uh, 12 stained glass windows that represent the history of our country. Uh, we've got uh, a number of statues and, and bronzes and so forth. It's, uh, it's really quite interesting, and you can get lost in the hallways just kind of wandering around looking at all the different pieces of art. Good stuff. It's the Command and General Staff College Foundation. They do take donations to keep this thing going. Uh, where can people go to find out more online? Well, you can go online to uh, www.cgscfoundation.com. Dot org, uh, and we uh, we do accept donations. We are a 501c3. We do support the Command and General Staff College in the areas of scholarship. We have a number of lectures that we uh, put on uh, after our lectures to enhance the learning uh, or the academic experience. Uh, we have a number of uh, distinguished professors that we bring in to talk to the students, work with the students. Uh, we provide a number of academic awards uh, f throughout the college. Uh, we sponsor an annual ethics symposium. Uh, we do a lot of things. I was just working on it this morning, as a matter of fact, our annual report, and it's, uh, it's almost amazing the amount of things that we do do uh, in support of the college. We also support our military families. You know, they've been uh, 13, 14 years of uh, repeated deployments. We support... Our military families uh, try to enrich their lives. We have a youth reading program at the at the Post Library, uh, a women's conference. We do workshops uh, to strengthen military families. Uh, and then we do a number of things in outreach. Uh, one of the things we do is our international celebration, uh, or our celebration of international friendship in September at the Kaufman Center where we introduce each class of uh, international officers to the Kansas City community. Last year in 2016, we had the West Point Glee Club. Uh, this year, uh, we're looking to either bring in the Army Chorus, the Army Band, or uh, bring back the West Point Glee Club. So we do a, we do a number of things in three major areas, uh, plus we try to stay connected with the alumni. Absolutely. Sounds like a ton of stuff, and you can find out more at on the web, cgscfoundation.org. Correct. All right, fantastic stuff. Hey, thanks for being with us this morning. We look forward to talking with you again. Indeed. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. You got it. That's Colonel Doug Tystad, U.S. Army retired from the Command and General Staff College Foundation.